Cinch Touch is a JavaScript MVC framework, and you can use it to compile uh, applications for you know mobile platforms like iOS and Android. Although I've been using it in as an application in the Chrome web browser, uh, you can run it full screen, and, and it's just like a touch application on a touch screen, so it's really nice. I've been using it as a replacement for my clients for Adobe Flash and Flex since the future you know thanks to adobe has been a little uncertain we had to choose something that we could rely on going forward and we looked at a lot of different javascript frameworks and in the end this is the one that won out compared to the others for lots of different reasons that i'm, I'm not going to go into but what i've got here is on my machine i'm running the community edition of zend server and in the chrome browser we're going to be building an application here and running it so this is basically a development setup you're going to see but it's very similar if you want to use it in production so let's go ahead and get started the first thing to do is to go to censure.com and initially there's a couple of files that we need to download and set up this can also be used for ext.js which may be another framework you've heard of um, made by the same people but the first thing we need to do here is we're going to go into products and we're going to choose Censure Touch. And then there's actually a couple of different versions you can download. You'll notice that basically there's a, a one that you pay for in the licensing. And then there is a, a sort of a free version. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to download here. And you'll see that actually what it is, is you can download the, the GPL version. And that's actually the one that we're going to be using today in the video. So basically you just click to download the GPL version and it'll take you here. You can see there's lots of documents you can look at. I have to say the Censure documentation is superb and I use it all the time for references. Uh, you can go in and click on getting started with Censure Touch 2 for example and go to the Censure Learning Center. I do recommend looking through there. There's some great documentation and videos. So while that's downloading, the other thing that we're gonna need, let's just go back again and go products, Censure Touch and go download and this is this is more of a convenience than anything what we're actually going to be using as well I'm sorry let's go back one here is we're going to be using the Censure command so what I've got here is basically you can click on to download Censure command and it's the same tab here let's just get rid of this one and I'm using the Mac version uh, the other one I use all the time is actually the Linux version uh, the 64-bit they're both very similar, work the same way, but basically you download this command as well. And once that's installed, it's a convenience command. We can use it to, to build out an application for us without having to fill in you know, lots of files and copying files around. So we're gonna install that as well. And I think you'll appreciate using it and saving yourself some time and trouble. Now that we have those files, you'll end up with two here. This first one, the Censure Touch 2.0, 2.0 in this case is the GPO version, that's the framework, and this other one is the zipped up version of the OSX application. So we're just going to go ahead and unzip that, and then we're just going to run it, which will be an installer. And basically we can just go through, read the licensing agreement um, before you agree. I read it before, so I'm just going to click accept. Go forward, just leave this in here. I've gone with the default location since that'll be in my path. Just go next and next again. It's going to copy across a whole bunch of files for us. And now that's completed, we're just going to click finish and that goes away. Now I'll go ahead and extract the framework. There's a lot of files in the framework here and we don't need to necessarily go through them all. But I'll just show them to you here. We'll just expand it. There's a lot of different folders and a lot of different files. Now, when we create our application, we're going to create an empty folder that'll become our website. And we're going to put this framework in there so that we can generate an application from it. So to do that, what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you, although I'm sure you probably know how to do this already, but I'm going to go ahead and create my vhosts in my Zen community server so that I can serve up a website. And just to make sure that it's working, before we put the framework in or anything else, I'm gonna create just a dummy page to make sure that it gets served up in my web browser here. Now as a pointer, you should also remember, although I'm sure you're familiar, you need to override your, your host, local machine's hosts file. 
And I'm sure if you do a quick search on the web, you'll find out how to do that. It's very straightforward. So I'm editing my vhost file in the terminal here. And as you can see, I've set up my document root to point to my sites folder. And I'm going to create a folder in there called Censure Touch, which will house everything and set up the relevant permissions already for the folder, uh, along with everything else. So that's how you set one up in case you're curious. Although I would recommend, obviously this is just a development version and you probably want to follow some better practices for production. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and go to this empty folder here and start setting up things. So here I am in the terminal inside that Censure Touch folder and here it is in the finder up here. And as you can see at the moment, they're both empty. Or the, sorry, there's no files in here. So I'm gonna, just so I can test that my, my locally served up uh, file here on the server is gonna work correctly, my local host, I'm actually just gonna go in and create a simple document very quickly. So I just call it my test.html. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do this step. I'm just gonna do it quickly to verify that everything's working as I expect. So I'm just gonna go in now, let's edit that file. And I'm just gonna put in here just a basic HTML straightforward format with a HTML tags and a header tag and a body tag. And then inside the body, we'll just put, it works. Save the file. And on my machine here, I overrode my host file that I could put in censure.local to serve up this folder. And as you can see, here's the mytest.html file. We'll just click on it and sure enough, there we see the text, it works. So I know that the server side is now being served up correctly. Let's go ahead and generate our Sencha application. So what we can do is, first of all, let's get rid of our test file. We don't need that anymore. Now to generate the application, we actually need to have a copy of the framework here. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the framework into the folder. And I'll just do a listing here so you can see it. And now what I'll do is, when we run the command, we need to have the framework to hand so that the command knows how to use it. So we actually go into that folder here with all the files and to generate the application, uh, we actually just use a command, this, the censure command. And if you just type it in by itself, you'll see that it's gonna give you all the usual stuff you'd expect to see that can help you with all the options and things like that. Now, we know from what we can do here is we just type censure and we say generate app. We need to give the application a name, so I'm just gonna call it my app. And now we need to also give it a path. These are sort of the expected arguments that we'll, you'll need to give it every time. So in this case, the path, we just need to go up one. We just need to go back up to the censure touch folder because we don't wanna generate it here in the framework folder. So we just do that and hit return. It's gonna see some things go by. You'll see it generate some files for us and some configurations to save us all the hard work. And now we're done. So here's all of our files up above here. There's the framework and here's all the other files it's generated for us, which over time they're gonna make sense to you. Don't worry about them right now. If we just go back to the browser and we just put in censuretouch.local, we should see our center application. And here it is. So it's generated our application for us and out of the box, it always generates this, this view here with some tabs and we can click here and you can see it'll switch between a couple. So it's, it's built in every time you generate the application just so you can verify that it's working. Nine times out of 10, if not always, what you'll end up doing is, is stripping those out and not using them. But it's convenient that they put those in there so we can verify everything works exact, exactly as we expected. So that's basically how you generate from scratch a Censure Touch application. Obviously we'll be expanding on this in the future and going through how to actually use Censure Touch. But I wanted to give you sort of the heads up as to how you can generate an application and get started quickly and easily.